Hello and welcome to Talking Tolkien. Today we're going to look at a newly released edition of The Lord of the Rings. It arrived at my doormat yesterday and this is what it looks like. So I've not opened it yet. I thought I would do it on camera. I don't really know much about it except that it's deluxe and has some illustrations. Now what's nice is it came in this box. So let's open it up and have a look. Okay, so here we are. We'll open the box and we get an empty box and this thing. Okay, let's have a look at what it says on the back. Um, since it was published, has been a book people have treasured. In 2005, the text was fully restored. For the first time in its history, it is now presented together with the author's own paintings, drawings and illustrations making this as close as possible to the version that J.R.R. Tolkien imagined as he wrote his way to Mordor and back again. Definitive version of the text printed in two colours with gilt edging and a ribbon marker. We'll have a look at all this soon. Illustrated more than 30 full colour paintings, drawings and illustrations by Tolkien, all of which appear here for the first time. Features the original red and black maps drawn by Christopher Tolkien and a removable facsimile of the King's Letter, written in Tengua and sent by King Elisar to Sam, which is printed in black with silver foil. Okay, that's cool. Quarter bound in red leather and black cloth with raised spine ribs. We'll look at this again in a minute. And stamped in two foils with the author's ring device. Has in a custom built slipcase bound in red cloth and stamped in gold foil. So that's the back of it. Shall we open it? Yeah, okay. Right. Rip and tear. Rip and tear. <coughs> <coughs> That just comes away. We'll put that there for now. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, this is cloth bound, as you can hopefully see there. This outer case is cloth bound. You've got that inset there with the ring motif. On the other side of the slip case, we've got the JRRT uh, logo, which again is like gold gilded. Top and the bottom are blank. First thoughts, so yeah, it's very nice. It's quite heavy as well. Let's take this off. So there's the slip case. Solid slip case. Very solid. That's good to see. Leaves from the book of Marsball. Uh, okay, this is cool. Uh, so yeah, you can see these. <clears throat> the history of these, when um, obviously they're, they're from the story when they're in the mines of Moria, when um, Tolkien initially published got got Lord of the Rings published through through his publishers, uh, Alan and Unwin, he wanted to to include these and he created these himself. He used tea bags, I think, and and all sorts to make them look weathered. But obviously, in the fifties, the the cost of producing these, even as in the pages themselves, was prohibited. So he didn't didn't include them. And I don't think they were included for years and years until uh, maybe the 60th or 50th, I think the 50th anniversary in, in 04. I think that was the first time they'd actually been included. But they've never been done like this as facsimiles, which is, is very cool. So there, there they are. And they go in their own little envelope here. Pour some in. That's very nice. Okay, so we can see that there. So that was just at the side of the, the book. Place that there for now. <laughs> okay. This is a said book. So starting on the front, we've got the signature uh, replica there. That's the ring that we saw on the other side of the, the slip cover. And there's the 
the ring. Now this, this design, this was done by Tolkien himself um, as a suggested artwork for the first editions. There's the spine we saw before. So as I said, hopefully you can see there these um, these are pronounced. And this is this is leather, yeah, which is nice. So we've got leather there. Um, outside we've got the motif. This is interesting, yeah. So that's like gold. What do you call it? I don't even know what you call that, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, it's like gold along the edge. Very nice. There you can see at the top. I don't know um, how it's bound, but hopefully you can see there. <clears throat> so then we'll open it up. Oh la la. This is said King's letter. Now this is one of, it says on the back, what this is. This is one of three facsimiles of the King's letter, which was sent by Aragorn to Sam, inviting him and his family to meet the King as he traveled north. The letter's in Tengua, in two columns. It's got a translation. It appears in the epilogue to Lord of the Rings. Uh, and it also says on the back that you can read more about the epilogue um, in chapter 11 of Sauron Defeated, volume nine of the history of Middle-earth, which is nice. That's, um, you can see that's shiny as well. Very nice. <clears throat> and then the final piece Apart from the book we have is this rather large map. That's a proper map. I think for years we've had below standard maps in, in editions of Lord of the Rings. This is this is what we want to see. We want a nice big map that we can um, we can really study. Oh there's more, I'm sorry there's more. This is the other map, isn't it? Okay, yeah, this is the map of Mordor. Wonderful. Same size as the one of Middle Earth. <clears throat> uh, I suppose the only issue, let's have a look on the back. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There's a bit of like, a bit of the cloths coming off there. I don't know if that would be an issue. I don't know. Uh, so let's have a look inside. Okay, so here's a better look at the books. So you've seen the slip cover. Let's have a look at the book itself. <clears throat> so we get the, the ring verse written by Tolkien himself there. There's the um, title page. Sorry about that. Um, let's look and see where this was printed. Printed and bound in Italy. <clears throat> and we get the contents. It's a bit like the um, the editions we saw last year, where you've got the the writing in red, but this paper is significantly thinner than the other the other editions. I suppose because of the size of it, it would be hard to use heavy paper, but it is noticeably thinner. I wouldn't say it's quality paper. Uh, we get a note on the illustrations here. Uh, that's by Wayne G. Hammond and Christina Skull. I believe that was taken from the um, illustrated art of the Lord of the Rings, which I can just show you here. So this was the previously released edition, which had Tolkien's artwork, obviously, for, for the Lord of the Rings itself. And that's what I would imagine would, would be in here. Then we've got the foreword to the second edition that Tolkien wrote. So what we don't have is the notes on the text that we had in recent editions. Whether that's required, I don't, I don't know, but that's, that's not in here. So you can see um, there are illustrations throughout, like here's one about of the Buckland Ferry. The paper's the same paper as the text on, so not particularly high quality or glossy on those, but um, considering the drawings, it seems okay. Now, Tolkien didn't do a huge amount of uh, drawings for this, and certainly I don't believe it was meant to be published. It was more, uh, you know, for his own uh, enjoyment. Whereas with The Hobbit, he he did do the um, the drawings as part of the work, and they were intended to be published alongside it, even though he didn't think much of the, the drawings himself. Just 
just look for another couple of examples to show you. There we go, Minas Tirith. <clears throat> it's certainly nice to have Tolkien's pictures alongside this, as you know, that's the author's vision rather than um, as someone else has interpreted it. Whether you'd prefer this to, you know, something like the the box set that was released last year with Anne Lee's drawings in as personal choice. I would say, um, I would say the, the paper quality seems a bit disappointing and it's not very thick. But then, as I said, it, it would be hard to do that in a one volume edition. Outside, things like this are a little bit disappointing as well. I think you can see that. Uh, apart from that, it, it is a nice edition. I think it's nice to see the publisher trying something a bit different for this. See the glossy cover there, or the glossy, um, the gold standouts. But again, there's another errant thread there. Like to look at the binding. So that's yeah, that, that's the addition. Personal preference as to what you think of it. I think the books, yeah, it's okay. Quite nice. the The additions are, are good. It shows that it's quite creative. I really like, really like the pages from the Book of Marzable. the King's Letter, which again is a nice touch to have. And probably the best thing to me is just having two decent sized maps to be able to refer to. Um, but certainly if you've already seen this, this work, then I wouldn't say there's anything particularly new in there. I might be wrong, but I don't think there's anything new in there that's, that hasn't been published in this book. But it is quite nice to have, yeah, Tolkien's drawings and, and work in there. So you've been watching Talking Tolkien. Thank you very much for watching the video. We've been looking today at The Lord of the Rings, illustrated by the author. Uh, hopefully you've got an idea of what, what's in that, published by HarperCollins. A very nice edition, all told. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Press those buttons on the bottom. There's a bell button as well. I don't make many videos, so it shouldn't... Um, cause you too much distress but feel free to, to click that if you want more instant notification of when I do make videos. Apart from that, thanks again for watching. See you soon.